And former presidential candidate of Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party, ANRP, Tope Fashwa, now joins us to take a look at this. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Fashwa, Fashwa rather. Yeah, good morning. It's good to be here. Thank you for joining us. Now, amidst the drama of the past few weeks, we've seen from EFCC, ICPC, and then N N NDDC, we hear the familiar response of setting up panels, you know, to look into allegations and counter allegations. Now, how optimistic are you that this will get to the heart of the matter? Uh, not very optimistic, you know. Uh... Like you said, um, a lot of what we're seeing is high drama, um, like more like entertainment for the people. If you look at the EFCC one, um, a certain presidential uh, panel was set up um, specifically to investigate uh, Magu. They held him for 10 days. And um, uh, when he came out, his uh, lawyer has also made allegations of several abuses, which were also similar to the kind of abuse um, of process that um, the EFCC under Magu would actually, uh, uh, you know, and for example, I hear that they leave people for days. They can just leave you in one place for days and not, uh, you know, question you, not ask you any question, not, you know, come back to you about anything. You don't know what's going on. They just forget you mm. and all of that. So um, I, I think something more systemic and fundamental uh, is what Nigerians need um, in order to um, solve this corruption problem, except we don't want to solve it. We want to just dance around it and all of that. We haven't actually uh, set out. As a matter of fact, uh, part of what's going on uh, points to the fact that we have actually wasted um, a, a, a great opportunity, we, which we wasted in 2015, um, by when, when President Buhari came in, because um, a lot of us were hopeful then that we would be able to fundamentally get to the root of corruption. Part of what's going on, uh, if you look at the case of Magu again, and I'll talk about and NDDC as well, um, part of what's going on is that um, as of that time, we did advise them that if you want to really make um, an impact in corruption issues, you also have to be above board. And in being above board, what we meant was that, you know, you needed to keep records of everything you did. And one thing that saves everybody is total transparency. Mm -hmm. So keep record. Now, the point, you know, about which Magu is being dragged, uh, some say that um, some of the recoveries are not accounted for. Uh, some of the monies collected are not accounted for. Sometimes they reach deals with some of these people. Sometimes they grab people's properties and nobody, you know, people are complaining about, you know, some of those deals. You know, and, and, and I just wonder why Magu will do that to himself, you know, especially so, so someone who has acted for five years or more. And um, uh, it's obvious that you have problems and there are people trying to get you everywhere. And of course, that business or that work is a, is a work that you have, to, you have to make enemies by every means. So if you would collect things from people and, and not be able to account for it, if you don't have a register, which again, is not even like my good thing is President Worry that should have told them mm -hmm. that, listen guys, you know, I don't want to be soiled by some of these things that may happen in the future. And so I want you to keep an immaculate records of everything that's going on. So, uh, so it, it, you know, it, the, the chicken came home to roost for Magu. Mm -hmm. However, it seems like, um, you know, when we want to get to the bottom of these things at some point in time, someone comes in and actually oblit obliterates the trail. And before we know it, we move on to another drama. Right. You know, because in our society, is one week, one drama. Mm. I mean, Mr. Fashua, you've raised very uh, crucial points there. But, you know, talking about probes and investigative panels, why do you feel, I mean, Nigerians, if we put it like that, are fatigued already with the process of our <laughs> probes and investigative uh, panels in this country? Yeah, Nigerians are fatigued because, like I said, it's uh, one week, one drama. If you look at the NDDC and uh, uh, all of that stuff around Mrs. Uh, Joy Nunier, and, uh, and, and, and the minister, Babio, and all the allegations and cancer allegations up to the point where sexual harassment came into the mix. You know, so fine, if we want um, Ikebe Super uh, kind of drama, um, 
Uh, and if that Ikebe super drama would move this country forward, okay, so be it. But the truth is, Ikebe super kind of drama, um, we're, we're, we're pursuing probes and all of that. Uh, then it comes to, oh, a man touched me and slapped him. And come on. Mm. You see, fine, if it's just for the entertainment value, but it's, it doesn't go beyond that. If you look at um, even the, uh, you can see that in the case of NDDC, typical example of a typical Nigerian, uh, if you like, parastatal, one of the worst cases anyway, if you ask me, uh, something that was set up to benefit the Niger Delta people. And the Niger Delta people are always complaining about marginalization, about the fact that their resources are taken and not spent on them. Okay, then you set up this this, this organization and say, let's go and do the work. And then it becomes the worst thing. Uh, that can happen to the Niger Delta people. It's not just the NDDC. This has been going on, as far as I know, since the days of Ompadek, you know, oil, I'm all mineral producing agency development, blah, 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 east of Nigeria. Uh, that's like 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Uh, so you, it, 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 gives, it gives some ammunition to those who say that, look, the Niger Delta is its own problem. Look at Professor uh Tunde, i think is his name you know boasting about how they have to take care of themselves and oh, come on and so so now the issue is this that in the problem of corruption in nigeria it seems that all of us are the same that's the truth uh, someone can extrapolate and say look forget it even those ones who are on the outside complain about corruption if they had their way they would do worse because all we have seen is everybody back to back. Okay, Joy Nunia is claiming that she was she ran a very good ship and that she was very up. To, and then Fabio tried to make her, you know, get her into some sort of cult and make her make some payment and lie against some people. Okay, fine, let's leave Joy Nunia. But what about this other professor who's running the show now, who walked out on the National Assembly last week? And even the allegations they made against the National Assembly, against the leader of that pro panel in the National Assembly that he had made some six billion recall, come on. Mm. So the truth is this, um, do we understand life in Nigeria? That's what we should be asking ourselves. Mm. Look at where we are today. We have um, COVID on the outside. Businesses have shut down. Millions have lost their jobs and their livelihoods. And, and this is probably going to get worse. And nobody knows what the eventual consequences. We're just hoping that um, if by any stroke of luck, if by the end of this year, things can go back to normal, some sort of normal, see if can be rescued. You know, businesses have been destroyed. Business models have been overturned Let's and all of I, that. So I, do we I understand? life the, you know because if we understood life we will understand the value of resources and the need to to, to stretch it now even many and of the monies that those guys are stealing where will they question. spend the money is what we should be asking ourselves i'm sorry no i have to, to travel to i'm sorry to we we, we yeah. are almost out of time i'm sorry but let's finally no just look out look at solution and way forward if i use your word one week one drama how do we get out of this national embarrassment if you like it's a leader it's a leadership question truly it you see it's going to be, look it, it Again, I'll tell you this, that um, with the amount of emotions that people invested in Buhari in 2015, especially around the issue of corruption and the, uh, unfortunately, the disappointment that has come out of that, especially, is going to be incredibly difficult. It's a leadership question. Mm. You see, set the standard, number one, but we also have to educate ourselves, like I was saying earlier on. Okay, so you steal the money, you buy all the cars. Okay, look at and now COVID is telling you that you can't even travel abroad to spend the money. And there are a lot of waste. You know how many billions of Nigeria money is stuck abroad now in different accounts of all of these people who just had the opportunity to grab. So this is a good time to educate ourselves. The truth is, I mean, like I said, do we understand life? Are we intelligent enough to run a country, to run all of these institutions and so on? This is the time to educate ourselves. It would have been good if we have a leadership who can speak eloquently to these and drag people along and show, rather than this drama, if you want to deal with someone, deal with them clearly. You right. know, prosecute them. Even some people have questioned the presidential panel uh, set up against Magu to say, okay, what powers do they have? They don't even have a power of prosecution, except something else happens. All right. So that's, that's it's how. a leadership question, and it's a time to teach ourselves some very hard lessons. Mm. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Fashua. I like the way you have put it there. It is time for us to educate ourselves and set the standard. Thank you for your contributions, and do keep safe out there. Thank you.